Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 89 of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, dumb, and full of... <laughs> well, we're full of opinions, of course. <laughs> oh, what? Of <fucking> course. <laughs> Silly fucking people. What did you think we were full of? Anyways, so just two people with you today. My name is Adam. I'm Matthew Lynn. How's it going, guys? I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Uh, so to open this, um, Matthew and I just finished watching a movie. It was a movie I had not previously seen before, and that was Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. The Hateful, Hateful Eight. Eight. I had previously seen it and forgotten 80% of it. <laughs> um, Adam, why... Most likely did I forget 80% of the movie. Because it's too much the same feel as Django Unchained. For too much. sure. Too much, for too sure. much the same feel. Not the same movie. Not no. the same story. No, no, no. But the same feel. You know what I would have almost appreciated in regards to like the similarities between Django Unchained? Is if they like... If they like made mention... Of okay, so like for example, if they made it take place in like the same universe as Jane, right. like the same world, and like he was mentioned, or like for example, for example, for example, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character was this bounty hunter, right? And yep. it looked like this took place right after the, the Civil War, is that right? The or Revolution, uh, the, it would have been the Civil War, was the, Civil War was the one between, yeah, okay. Civil War. So uh, right after the Civil War, so I feel like you could have easily just made instead of it Samuel L. Jackson, you could just put Django in there. You know what I mean? Like you really could have. He was literally playing a bounty hunter. Well, Samuel L. Jackson wasn't a bounty hunter. He was a a soldier that had that had served in the Black Brigades during the Civil War. He was a bounty hunter. That was the whole thing with the carriage at the beginning because he brought it like three bodies. He was like, can I tie these on top of your carriage? While I be, then if you guys are going to Red Rock where I'm going to collect my bounty. Because then he met the sheriff and the sheriff was like, oh, well, I'm the one who's going to give you your bounty in Red Rock. Wait, was he bounty hunting when he was in the carriage? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That was sure. his whole like beginning of this, where he came from. Yeah, and hunting. the way he knew the other guy. The Okay, well, he got into bounty hunting after serving in the right, war. Right, 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 after serving the war. Because he clearly has a history of serving in the in – the... Well, you would you would obviously have to change like the, the – his background a little bit you have to it'd have to be Django's character because but a I mean, big part of it is the interaction between Samuel L. Jackson in the hateful eight between Samuel L. Jackson and the general the old guy oh uh, I guess that's you know what true, I mean yeah. so you would lose a big part of that what would be cool though is if they were in the same universe and he was maybe mentioned. were mentioned yeah um, maybe as part of the gang uh-huh. or something like that you know the gang that the, that the girl was part of right that could have been cool yeah. And I even kind of thought that watching it, but too much, you know what it felt to me is mm-hmm. that, you know, Tarantino, he did one of the movies uh-huh. and then he thought maybe he just wasn't super happy with the way it came out or he wasn't able to do something in it that he wanted to do. Right. It feels a lot to me like he was like, I want to do it again. You know what I mean? But I can't do it exactly again. So I'm going to do it a little different. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say that. I think he was happy with Django Unchained. I, I think Tarantino is somebody who, you know, he's not going to go into production for one of his movies until he knows for sure it's, a, you know, it's the, whatever he's written true, is tight. I mean, this true. is only his ninth movie. He's been making movies do, since the 90s. You know what I thought, too, is do you think maybe simply that Tarantino is getting older and maybe just calming down a little bit. And that's why it wasn't such an off the wall action crazy movie. No, what I think it was is I think Tarantino was just going through a Western phase. I would probably argue in his real life, he was probably watching a lot of Westerns was just as a film fan was just going through a Western phase and was like, I want to make one, but I want to do it a little differently. Right. So he does Django Unchained and which was really good. I like Django. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was good. Not not my favorite Tarantino movie. And then having watching this, which, you know, I also enjoyed, but 
not my favorite Tarantino movie. We watched the extended version of of The Hateful Eight. I guess I can't really give a truthful answer until I watch the two hour, 15 minute version. It's just the first hour Mm -hmm. of the thing. You, you really were not enjoying it. You didn't, you like, you liked the, the, the banter and the scripting, but you were like, this is really drawn out. Yeah. You're like, let's get somewhere. Exposition, you know, and really it's not until the last quarter of the movie the last 25 percent of the whole thing right that you actually you even said yourself you're like oh now there's a who done it yeah now, now there's, there's something, something going happening. on yeah but the first two-thirds of the movie easily are just talking well, i was i was kind of just disappointed with especially at the beginning when it was just a bunch of people talking to each other because Tarantino, one of it, one of the things he's known for his filmmaking and writing is his heavy dialogue and his uh, enticing dialogue. You yes. know, and the reason why his dialogue is enticing and like draws you in is because even though it feels like exposition, like it's just a lot of people just you know, you know saying what could be said in four words and drawing it out to a paragraph right is because there was reason behind it so a lot of the times the reason was just to build anticipation which you see done fantastically in inglorious bastards right there's long drawn out scenes of dialogue but the dialogue is there to serve a point of well and there's lots of action in between yeah it the dialogue leads to something whereas like this it was heavy in dialogue, but the dialogue was more or less just like, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Well, how do I know you're not lying? Why would I lie about how I'm doing today? You know why I think I you'd lie about what you're doing today. It was that. So it's like, okay, what are we doing here? Why is this happening? Right. I really appreciated the, the dark humor. In, yes, it in was the very hatefully. funny. Um, my personality and my sense of humor – was very tickled by the whole thing. Yeah. I laughed a lot, really hard in some parts of it. Uh Uh-huh. Which is interesting because I think I may have over laughed for that movie because it's really not comedy. It's not meant to like be a hilarious movie. No, I think it is. Is it? Yeah. I I think it's supposed to be just as you said, a very dark comedy. Very dark comedy. Yes. 100%. One hundred percent. Yeah, if you're any very kind of justice warrior at all, you're not gonna like this movie. No, if, well, if, if it, any kind. And it's funny because <laughs> I I was actually just going to bring that up, like when like the Mexican guy with his accent. Yes, it was, was just so, over so the top. yeah, so just <laughs> every stereotype down yes. to the like. He even said cabron. <laughs> yeah, which don't get me don't get me wrong. Like I've had plenty of Mexican friends that I've heard them speak like that use like Caron a lot and things but like the way this guy was just doing it just seems so like it seemed like a it, it seemed like the like a, the whitest guy you know trying to do trying like to play a Mexican, a Mexican guy accent. yes yeah. it was very over the top it's you know if it makes anyone feel better spoilers his face does get blown off his face so, does get blown off <laughs> you know, I guess justice is paid yes um overall I did I enjoyed the um how, how do I put this? I enjoyed the action of watching the movie. Yeah. Like I enjoyed sitting there with a friend watching the movie. And because it was the extended version, there was lots of time to like talk about what was yes, going on and you didn't lose of... anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So I actually kind of liked slowing it down because mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a talker during movies. So that was kind of nice. Um. But do I rank it in the top five Tarantino flicks? No, 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 not by any... it's going to be in the Honest... bottom five. Honestly, I would I'd put both of his westerns at the bottom five. I think he's proven that he can do it, and uh, it can Django be. Django might in... be like six or seven. It's pretty good. I, I think so. It. I enjoyed uh, it. I, I really enjoyed it. it. High. I thought the story it, got, it had DiCaprio in it, so I have a soft spot for oh, any of those movies. Right, you do. I just love him. You do. His his best film, I still think, is uh, Inglorious Bastards. You really like that movie. I think a lot. I think that's his best movie. Do you for think sure. that uh, it was Brad Pitt, right? Who he played the main character? It, yeah. Do you think he was the right pick for for the role for the main because character role? of what the what the character was? Yeah, I do. I think everybody was beautifully cast in that role. Why you don't think Brad Pitt did well? I just don't think he's the most 
amazing actor in the world, <gasps> period. How dare you? Why? I know, he's beautiful. Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, he just, you know, older Brad Pitt, as, he's get, as he gets older, mm-hmm. every day that he gets older, I like him more and more. Yeah. But just like particularly younger bad Brad Pitt, and I have absolutely zero pedestal to stand on uh-huh. to judge an actor because I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at, honestly. I don't know any of the terms or anything. Right. But I do know what I enjoy to watch. And he's so, you can tell he's really trying to act, mm, in my opinion. I see he what is you're clearly saying. an actor. Uh huh. Whereas as he's getting older, he's to me it seems more and more natural. He he's good at playing like the older dad figure. He's good at playing like yeah, the put together guy. He when he was younger, he was definitely just kind of put into the hunk roles. Yeah, well, he was beautiful. just he was just put into the hunk roles of really popular movies. You For know, sure. the, the two biggest ones that pop out to me are like Interview with a Vampire and Great uh, Movie. Great movie. Uh, but he was just the vampire hunk, mm, you know, exactly. and then mm. Fight Club where he was Great just the grunge movie. hunk, you know. <laughs> and that's the thing is that he's been in a lot of great movies. Uh-huh. I just don't know that he is what made those movies great. The impression I get from Brad Pitt in regards to his acting, and and just to be clear, I'm a Brad Pitt fan. I, I do really like Brad Pitt. But he does – the way the, the impression I get when I watch his movies, and I think you get this impression from a lot of actors, is you can you can just tell when an actor's heart is in the role, and when it's not, you know. Yes. And so, and sometimes that can just be as simple as you know he's just he's working with a director he really likes or he really likes the story, but sometimes too actors get kind of put into roles of like you know sometimes it could be in their contract or you know True. other things because he was in a movie done by I can't remember the director's name but he's more of like an indie like for the filmmakers kind okay. of director gotcha. very artsy and not even not even artsy but just very like you know filmmakers like to pick him apart okay I got gotcha. but uh but he was in a movie called snatch or Brad Pitt was and he pl- and he played uh, a gypsy from like Irish descent. Oh, so, okay. So because the and the movie took place in England, like Northern England, so he spoke with this. He was able to like literally listen to kind of have like gypsies in that area spoke and was able to mimic that to the point I don't think where he, a very nice he word. did it. So well, that's what they are. Okay. I don't think you're where he did it. <laughs> That's what they are. I have to deal with them every day at work. They don't get another name. They're gypsies. Oh, God. And uh, when they were, uh, but he did the accent so well to how they spoke, which is, you can't understand it, or they had to put like subtitles. Oh, no kidding. Down he nailed his, it so hard. Yes, he did very well. You know, well that's in that impressive. Role. Being able to do something like that is impressive. Mm-hmm. Um,. I don't know. I hate to hate on him because I know everyone loves him, and I do. I do love him. Mm-hmm. He's got a, a spot in my heart. Uh-huh. It's just you got to be in. The, he's got to be in the right role. I guess is a good way to put it. Right. I did like him in Inglorious Bastards. I did. I felt that he was good for that role. Mm-hmm. Um, the way he was able to speak, his dialect in it, kind of the choppiness, you know, mm-hmm. the to the point choppiness was was well done. Right. I just, I don't, he doesn't, he just kind of stands there and talks and yeah. I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of Inglorious Bastards as a whole. Uh huh. Anyway, so I guess we just have differing viewpoints on the movie and I, maybe I'm judging the actor a little bit uh-huh. and really I should be judging the movie. I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of that movie. Right. I feel ya. It just didn't do it for me. So, uh, what issues do we have with me calling Gypsies Gypsies? I just I don't know I don't I feel like that's a naughty word. Are you, you know allowed gyp- to say that? Do you know what gypsies are? I I have an idea in my head. What do you think they are? I'm I'm genuinely curious because I've They're never like, heard somebody complain about calling a gypsy a gypsy. Never. No. I just feel like that's a naughty word. That's like the N word. No. Aren't you not allowed to say that? <laughs> not for them. No. no. Oh God! Well, now I'm gonna sound terrible. <laughs> I'm just curious though. I'm imagining like people who are 
wear brightly colored cloth clothing and band together and don't live in houses, kind of like more street type people. Uh-huh. Very musical. Have They have a lot of like music and they make like jewelry and things and sell things on, on the, in the market and whatnot. And they're just very like, not poor, but like homely, earthy people, you mm. know? So th- what do you think when you think gypsy? What is it? What, what, what's your definition? Well, I don't think I, I know what what's they a gypsy? are. What is it? So, so usually they're of either um, Irish descent or Albanian descent, I want to say. Albanian. See, I think of like Greece. Greece. There, there might be some Greece gypsies, but the more prominent ones are usually like, like there was a reality I think of, like, show Greece about the Albanian and Turkey. ones. The, the, I see belly dancers in my head, but not quite like that. Not not your stereotypical I, one. I think I think gypsies exist in every culture, but they all kind of oh. come from one place. So I I think so. Like here in uh, where we live, the Irish gypsies are really uh-huh. popular. Or the the correct term, if or it's not even correct, it's just they're Irish travelers, what they call them. But they don't have any social security numbers. They live in like trailer parks. They steal. Um, at work, when they come in, we have to move our tip jar away from them because they will start to take our tips. They will have their kids come in and start to take our tips. Uh, they usually, um, the like 10, 11, and 12 year old uh, girls, they dress up and like cake loads of makeup and everything and uh, go into the department stores to get free makeup. And things like that. They're they're not very pleasant people. What did you have in your mind that a gypsy was? Why do you, why do you look so surprised right now? I just don't feel like you're allowed to say anything that you just said. Why? Because that's just I. I don't that's know. That's what they do. They but should, I feel like they that's like saying that all then. black people steal. Like you're not allowed to say those but things, black, Adam. But all black people don't steal. It's literally in their culture, gypsy culture, to do that. They all pay in cash. They don't have a car. They don't have bank accounts. That's what they do. So my mom grew up in France. Uh huh. And when she was a little girl, um, she used to go to the market with her family. Okay, uh-huh. you had to go to the market to get like food and shit and clothes and stuff. And at the market, she said there would be gypsies, and she would purposely get lost. My mom would from her family so that mm-hmm. she could run over and go hang out with the gypsies, mm-hmm. and. My mom tells me stories of growing up that the adults would tell the kids that if you're naughty or you don't stay with the gypsies, they're going to steal you. They're going to take you away Mm -hmm. and you have to go live with them. And it like scares most kids. It's like an insult. But my mom was very fascinated with them and loved them Uh and wanted that to happen. She wanted to go run (laughs) away and be with the gypsies. Uh And she says that they would have like instruments and be very musical and had very bright, beautiful like clothes that was like handmade. Like they don't go to the store and stuff and buy shit. Maybe modern day ones do. Uh, I was going to say But they were that. very like lived outside street people, vendors. Right. If you will. Well, I'm not sure. very highly regarded in, in, in that society at the time. Right. Like it was not, it was not, you, you didn't aspire to become a gyp- gypsy. Right. Because of the reasons I just described. So that's my point. So what's wrong with what I said compared to what you just said? I just feel like you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> isn't that naughty? Like, that's a fucking culture of people, isn't it? I mean, it is, but so is the KKK. Yeah. Should we, should we not Should we not talk shit about them? Is that naughty? They do bad things. Should we not mention that? But I, I don't know. I just feel like... The gypsies do bad things. If they don't want that shit to be is mentioned, they shouldn't do bad things. It's not a bad word. I'm allowed to say it. I'm yeah. feeling better about saying it. I said it a few times. Yeah, they literally call themselves. They know what they are. They're well, gypsies. <laughs> Jesus, I just okay. All do, right. Do you want me to look I'm it up? You. Would you? Can we you Google it? Could we Google it real quick just to find out? You? Because I'm perfectly fine with shouting it to the world. You know me, Adam. <laughs> I am. But I can just fine tell you're it. very bothered by. I this. just feel like we shouldn't go on the internet. And say words that we're not totally sure we know the meaning of. Well, I'm is all. pretty sure I know what the meaning of the word is. But let's just let's just make sure. Let's and then here. once we know, I will say it all day long. 
like. <laughs> I appreciate it. Stand by, folks. Let's see here. Oh, apparently there's not just a uh, this. There's a little bit of searching involved. Well, because it's giving me like the old term of what gypsy was, which was very okay. different hundreds of years ago. Out of curiosity, what was that? R- just Romanian wondering. people, and some of them are of Romanian. Descent. Oh no, it was literally just like. Say, like, yeah, like a Romanian instead of Romanians, descent. they were just called. Did you call they were called gypsies. gypsies. Yeah, it was but, all the people who live there were called that. But they're not called that now. But they're that is not Romas what it is now. anymore. Yeah. Now okay. Interesting. Good to know. So that may have been what I'm picturing in my head. Probably because I'm thinking because... Greek. I immediately thought Greece. No, no, no. So maybe the whole thing has very much changed in modern times. Yes, yeah, so I think you're thinking of something very different than what I'm. I am. Of. I'm thinking of like. You ever play Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Okay, that is not what I am talking about. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm not those people about, would be gypsies. I'm not talking about like Quasimodo's love interest. Okay, she was a gypsy in that. Like, yes. No, that is that's not what my I'm gi- talking That's what about. I'm thinking of, bro. No, that is not what okay, I'm let's. Can about. we get a modern description they, of they gypsy? They came from those people, but they are not that anymore. Okay, so all the more reason why I feel like it's an insulting word. Like you shouldn't say it. It's like saying the n word. No, it's not no, at all. Like you fucking gypsy. Oh, uh, it kind of feels good saying it. I can't lie. Let's see. Let's see. My name is. There we go. <laughs> Quasimodo's girlfriend. <laughs> His house burned down, man. You well, when I first heard the term, right now, the first too that's soon. True. Well, the first time I heard the term gypsy, that was the first thing I thought of. Well, that's literally what I. That's what my mom day. always described. Uh, that's what I thought gypsies were. Right. Da 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 da. Yes, there there were literally TV shows called Big Fat Gypsies Weddings. Oh, jeez, it is Louise. not a okay, bad. Apparently, word. it's fine. <laughs> apparently, it's fine. That was a close uh, group. Mary married young and espoused regressive gender norms while expressing boisterous taste at social gatherings. Uh, this is just the weddings they're talking about. The programs have garnered controversy for their depiction of the sexualization of young women with overtly sexualized dancing and over the top dresses designed to showcase young women's coming of age and introduction to adulthood. <laughs> Remember I said they come in 10, 11 and 12 years old, caked in makeup and wearing skimpy clothing. They probably do. They do um, the whole have multiple wives thing. Sounds like they probably do. No, actually I do not think they do. Oh, that. Excuse me. Excuse that. But they, I, me. they marry, they marry, them off very young though oh. is the whole thing. Is there a big gathering of these people in like Armenia? Or are the the show where they are Armenian in this show? Because I feel like my mom watched this show and they were Armenian. Yeah, Armenia was the other one. So they're either of Irish or Armenian descent. Here, yeah. Yes. Least. So okay, I remember that show. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's there you go. Though so that's what they are now. Yes. Interest okay. Cool. They, and they don't Shout out to the gypsies. <laughs> I'm glad we I don't mind that you guys. That was really bothering you. Um, if that's the case, if that's what they are now, I'm cool with those people. They're just over the top. I'm down with them. Uh, I don't like it when they try to steal my fucking tips at work. You don't steal. That's rude. That's what they do, though, yeah. dude. You know what's funny as hell? Talking about stealing tips. Let me tell a story real quick. Go for it. So I worked at a uh, coffee shop one time. Not the one that I currently work at. It was mm-hmm. different town. But I was working. It had drive through in it. And we used to keep a tip jar outside the, the drive through. It was like a little windowsill. You mm-hmm. know? And uh, it was full one day. A bunch of dollars and stuff. And there was no one in the drive through And the ki- there's a kid who came running up. And he stole the fucking jar he grabbed it Mm -hmm. but there was like a curb that went around the whole drive through right Uh so he tripped over the curb and just ate shit all over the drive through and the money went everywhere and he fucking jumped up he tried to grab a couple dollars and he just kept running but (sighs) it was fucking hilarious because i was running the drive through i got to see all of this right (laughs) so all of a sudden i just hear like change clacking i'm like what the fuck and i look over and here's this kid just eating shit just falling face first, dude. Oh, my gosh. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I was at my job once, and <laughs> we had this mother and her, like, daughter of, like, looked like she was seven or eight years old. And immediately we knew they were they were these gypsies, yeah, which, which is fine. But, like, 
So the mother, it was me and this girl working, and the mother uh, took my coworker who was at the register at the time and like wanted to bring her over by the pastries, so she could start asking questions about the pastries. Uh-huh. And I was I was doing something else, but I wasn't paying attention to them. But all of a sudden, I just hear like this slam of change, and I just hear this: "Your daughter's trying to take my fucking tips." What? Yeah, just like loud as hell. This was like this was like over it was a another year employee ago who said now. that. No, it was the employee. The mother pulled aside. She had like oh, looked apparently awesome. and saw the daughter was like taking and trying to stuff all the change and stuff into her purse. Oh my god! And she went and she took the tip jar. She like moved it over and slammed it down and said, "Your daughter's trying to take my fucking tips." Uh-huh. And How just funny. like yeah, and like it's it was I sat there and watched like her go into her daughter's purse and pull out all the money and put it <laughs> back into the tip jar. And then they just left. They buy anything, just left. Like, bye. I don't even like this place. Bye. <laughs> all the girls, all the little girls will come in and they'll come in in like groups of twenty. And oh my goodness! Yes, jeez, they'll all come in. That's a and pack. You can, all, and you can all tell. So they're always that's not all, a group. That's a squad. That's a squad. Yeah. <laughs> so and they're all like ten to twelve years old. They're all wearing all black, and they all I don't know why they do a this. Fucking battalion but of they, gypsies. They all fucking what wear the fuck? these like the flip these like flip flops with like the fuzzy like part over the the oh, foot, yeah. you know? Yeah, I know. But they all wear those. It's like, little, it's like a uniform. Yeah. Do they exactly. ever fuck shit up? They don't fuck shit up, but this is. <laughs> Has anyone I, ever tried to confront them? Like, do they act as a whole? You're you're not al- allowed to. What do you so, mean? What do you mean I'm not allowed to? So, well, just as being a being somebody who works there, you're you're not. Allowed oh, to, you like, can't confront have that kind of confrontation with them just for their you ethnicity. Know. Is it an ethnicity culture? Culture. I you guess, can't fuck with people more... unless they fuck with the store. Right, right, okay, right. Gotcha. Which they, which they yeah. do often. Oh. So, but the thing is, all we can do is just you call security just and they shoot have them away. Them out. And they do it enough, you know, they'll be you know blacklisted or whatnot, or not be allowed to come back in Blacklist. again. Yeah. They got the black spot. <laughs> they got the black spot. <laughs> but no kidding though, this is what they used to do. And I remember the first time I witnessed this, it blew my mind. So they my were, mind is being blown today on this podcast. So they all they all come up one by one, uh-huh. and all they pay is for pumps of syrup. Okay. Oh, you've told me that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Tell the people. Tell the people. But so, but they don't. I'm not talking about just I want five pumps of raspberry, you know, in a cup, which is already kind of asking a lot. Which is kind of already asking a lot. I'm talking the. They'll literally be like, I'll take uh, five pumps of raspberry, two pumps of vanilla, three pumps of blackberry, two pumps of hazelnut, one pump of coconut, like that. They all have like their own to recipe. Where it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so all of them come one by one and they all have different combinations of the syrups that they want. And it fills up these 12 ounce cups like a quarter of the way. And then they all go over to one of the tables and they all pull out a fucking Red Bull. Oh. And they all take the Red Bull and the they old pour Red it Bull over. And syrup. All the, anyone over who's the worked syrup. at a coffee shop yep. hasn't confronted that before. <laughs> oh yeah. So you know what's a total bitch is at the shop I work at now. We uh-huh. have a drink called a uh, Sunrise. Uh huh. It's a it's a blank Sunrise. It's the name of where we live, Sunrise. <laughs> and um, it is Red Bull and syrup with mm-hmm. either. Well, there's a topping. I can't tell you guys the fucking recipe. You'll just steal it. But there's a topping on it of your choice. So I've had a lady who came in, uh-huh. and the the previous owner had to tell her to stop doing it because she would literally just get pumps of syrup, yeah. like you said. And I don't really give a fuck most of the time, so I'll just charge like a dollar right. for that. I don't, I don't care. So I was doing that, and we were going through a ton of syrup for this lady, and she would bring her own Red Bull and pour it in. Mm-hmm. And we literally serve a drink that is that, Adam. Uh... So the owner was like, what the fuck? Like, just order the drink, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I've, well, conf- I've, I've encountered that before. I, I, I always just feel like doing that at coffee shops is like the – just – it's just like you just don't do it, you know. They have a drink. Don't bring your like own that. shit to a coffee shop. Yeah. Don't bring your own fucking milk. Nobody likes when you do that. No. We're not allowed to use it, by the way. It's mm-hmm. health code. Yeah. So don't even bring it. Don't bring your own fucking cups. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to do that, but nobody likes it. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, just don't bring shit to a coffee shop. One thing that kills me is we'll have people come in and they'll say, can I have two shots of espresso over ice, but can I get it in a large cup? You know, and then, you know, quote unquote, I like the ice. Okay, bitch. And then they fucking you get the espresso, and then you watch them walk over to the they're fucking gonna do condiment next. bar. Yep. Yeah, and they pour mm-hmm. the milk in there and make themselves oh, a yeah, grand the, old the free ice cream. latte. That's, oh yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, like, and I to the point now to where like, if I see somebody do that once every time they come in now, and they're like, can I get two shots of ice? Just okay, large latte, you got it. You know, and I'll still give them the two shots of the ice. Like, okay, you, you just got a latte. You just want to pour the milk in yourself. I understand. I understand. I <laughs> understand. <laughs> yeah, don't try to cheat the coffee shop. We're like, here to make your day better. I don't think we're stupid. Like, we know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, you're you know not sly. I mean? You're not sly. You're not, sly. You're not the, you're not the one only one. That. Yeah. That must be like that with all retail things. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. But, and I'm sure we've been, you know, the Like the people the at IHOP are like, just don't steal the forks. We know everyone's <laughs> fucking doing it. You're not the only one doing it. Stop. Yeah. Everybody steals the forks at IHOP. Well, I, I feel like just any restaurant. I feel like you talk to any waiter or waitress, well, they're going to be like, yeah, people just. Why? Is, is that like a specific thing that happens? I've never stolen a fork at IHOP. Well, my specific place, I'll let you know now. Watch out for me. Is Denny's. <laughs> oh, I fuck up the Denny's every time I go there, dude. Really? Yeah, no matter which one I go to, I take something from it. Why? Just because you uh, hate them? Or? At this point, it's just a thing that I've done all my life, so I just keep doing it. <laughs> so you just Where did it originate from? I don't know. I don't know. I used to steal salt shakers. Um, I used to have quite, <laughs> quite, quite the, the collection. collection of salt shakers. Let me tell you what. Um so I think it stemmed from that. I think I just got older and quit mm-hmm. going for the big ticket, quit going for the salt shaker and started uh-huh. going for forks and spoons. And... When I was when I was younger, like in high school, <laughs> I had a phase where I liked to do that a lot. Not at restaurants, though. I did a lot of fast food places, but I always liked it to be very blatant in front of the employees of what I was doing. Why? That's like a sickness, Adam. I guess it was a little bit. <laughs> but like, so there were like, so couple examples both of them were jack in the box separate jack in the boxes one of them we were like on lunch at school and we were like waiting in line there at jack in the box and i had friends like talking amongst themselves and they over there on like the main counter where the register was they had just one of those like napkin dispensers and i literally just stood there and i said out loud it pointed to it and i said i want that <laughs> and i literally just walked over like while the person was helping somebody i took the napkin dispenser i walked outside put it in my car and then just went back in line and nobody fucking said shit to me. So after wow. that happened, I was like, I could take anything I want. I was like, okay, I, we're gonna do more of this. Like everything is mine. So then there was a separate occasion <laughs> at another Jack in the Box where you got arrested. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we had walked in, and a lady was like mopping the floor, and we were waiting in line, and she was, you know, still finishing up mopping the floor as we were waiting in line, and then she like went and grabbed one of those like like wet floor signs that like folds out right into like a triangle like a pyramid looking thing Uh you know and the second she sat it out i just looked and pointed again and did exactly what i did last time it said (laughs) i want that and i just (laughs) and i just grabbed it walked outside put it in my car and joined my place back in line and nobody wow. fucking said shit to me. I did well, that at we a all few know. fast food places. Now there's like 18 people in the world who are going to know <laughs> like, oh, that, that's that you can guy. just walk out of what <laughs> anything you want from a Jack in the Box, and they'll never stop you. <laughs> yeah, that's I did. Funny. I did it once at Carl's Jr. I think I did it at a Taco Bell once. A lot of times, same things. I saw a couple napkin dispensers, but. <laughs> Just that's ballsy. After the first couple times it happened, I was like, "All right, let's keep this train, train rolling." I thought about going bigger. At one point. There was, I mean, why stop? Right? There was one time. <laughs> that's exactly what my thought was. I think there was one time I was in McDonald's, and this particular McDonald's had chairs that had like the seats were all different colors, right? Like right. red, green, blue, or whatnot. And, you know, and, and, you know, blue is my favorite color. So they had a blue one there, but it was one of those things where I like, I was sitting there 
and we were, me and friends were sitting at one of the tables eating and the chair was just like just like right across the way you know it had to be in front of the register it was one of my rules you know <laughs> But at this point, I want them to see it. I want them to know. <laughs> so, you know, it was just a few paces, like to my right. And I just was like staring at it, going through my head of like, okay, like it was just big enough to where I was like, I don't know if I could even get to fit in my car. If I can't, I have to bring it back in. I'm, and I'm not, a, and I'm not about to return a chair. Like I would just, I would just have to like, Wait I'm outside sorry, I with steal this. this. I tried. I couldn't. <laughs> and then, like, I think after it's that, it's like a fucking thought, Seinfeld uh, <laughs> sketch <laughs> of just Kramer doing that shit, just, just walking back in with it, putting it back, getting yeah, back in line. Great, I can't steal this. <laughs> oh, but yeah, God. I just I went through just uh, a little phase where I did that. It was a little bit of a sickness. I bought strawberries today. <laughs> oh yeah you bought the seeds yeah not the fruit folks i bought strawberry seeds the good shit so i've been looking for like two weeks for fucking strawberry seeds as everyone knows if you listen to this podcast ever i'm a fag and <laughs> <laughs> i love plants we're talking about, talking about naughty words earlier and matthew just drops that one <laughs> yeah. i love gardening i love plants but it's not enough for me to just go to the gardening section and buy plants of course not i need to get them as seeds and grow them and they're my babies and mm-hmm. i love them i have spray bottles i refrigerate the water so they get <laughs> nice crisp water i go all out and i grow some gnarly fucking seedlings okay i've been looking for a while i've been looking for about two weeks now for some strawberries mm-hmm. and let me tell you what they're a bitch to find adam really Yes, because nobody in their right fucking state of mind would ever start (laughs) strawberries from a fucking seed. That's insanity. By the time it gets – it, first of all, from planting to harvest Uh on a strawberry plant is about four months. Okay. Okay, it's it's 100 to 120 days, where most vegetables, we're talking like a month, month and a half, 30 Mm. to 45 days. it takes a long time. A very long time. Yeah. Two or three times as long as anything else. So you would never, you always just go buy the strawberry vines that are our bushes that are already planted, and then you plant those, and they only last a year, right? Mm-hmm. Huh. Mine are going to last longer <laughs> than a year. I'm going to keep mine alive. <laughs> uh, you can trick them into lasting multiple seasons. Okay. Yes. So it's really hard to find the fucking seeds, and basically the whole point of what I'm dragging out here is that I went, and I went to the store, I looked at a wall of fucking seeds, and... And I swear to you, there was, like, a bunch of packages that were all flipped over. Uh And I just, like, grabbed one. I just grabbed one randomly. I was like, fuck it. What is this? And it was strawberries. And then I started flipping them all over because I wanted more. No other ones. Uh I picked up the last fucking package of strawberries that have ever existed on planet Earth. It was meant to be. They're mine. I got them (laughs) in my kitchen right now. They got this weird fucking coating on them. Yeah, you're telling me about that. I've never seen a seed like this before, and I've been doing this a while. They got like this weird nutrient coating or some shit. I don't know. It's supposed to keep them aerated. It's supposed to keep like oxygen coming to the seed. Is it maybe because is it trying to think of how to wear this? Is it maybe because the seeds are specifically like designed to be a little easier to grow in Arizona? Strawberries don't usually grow here, right? They can't grow with like a you would heat. never find a wild strawberry plant in the desert. No. Okay. Um, but you can get them to grow if you give them shade and lots of water. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think the coating is is nutrient. It's also supposed to keep them because seeds are really really little. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to just grab one at a time to put them in the planter because what'll happen is usually you have to put a bunch of seeds like you just pinch. You grab a pinch of them, you put them in the hole, right. and then you'll get like five or six sprouts. Like what happened with my lettuce? Right. You know, you get a bunch of these sprouts in this little area, mm-hmm. and you got to go through and thin them. You got to pluck all them out and leave just one because that one little tiny sprout is going to become a big ass plant. Gotcha. Right. So you can't have like 12 big ass plants. It's not going to work. Uh-huh. So in nature, like the big ones will beat out the smaller ones, and, you know, the strong will live. Right. But you help that along when you're growing them. So you just pluck them. So with these coated ones, you don't have to do that. It's easier to grab just one. I think that's literally the main purpose of it. I think they're for old people. They were more expensive. (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah. 
Interesting. Well, I mean, you're not the only one. If there was the last ones there, you know. Oh, I'm so excited! I'm so fucking excited, dude. Uh, me and me and Justin worked a lot in the yard today. Yeah, you guys we, did. Uh, we built a fucking trellis mm-hmm. out of a cattle panel. We have two trellises now, guys. Two trelli. Two trelli. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, what? Oh, dude, we planted a shit ton. Planted like twelve or fifteen new plants. I'm I'm excited to see what the backyard's gonna you know look like when it's all you know grown now because you guys said you guys spread them a lot around the yard where like a lot of it's just dirt right now right oh dude yeah we got more than just strawberries so strawberries are my special little project right but we got like i don't know 15 or 20 packs of seeds and each pack has like 100 seeds in it right and we just scatter those bitches everywhere because part of when i bought the lettuce Mm -hmm. i had so many i planted a bunch of them as my little project and then the other ones i just threw out in the duck coop uh-huh. Well, now if you go out there and look, all of those sprouted. Right. We have a shit ton of lettuce in the duck coop now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's going to be a thing. Um, so Justin was like, oh, wow, things do sprout in the desert. Mm-hmm. And so then he went crazy. He's like, let's buy 15 packs of seeds and throw them everywhere. So that's what we did. Well, I uh, <laughs> I think his timing is impeccable. You know, I think uh, it's the yeah, perfect it time is, um, to... It plant is, here in Arizona. It's the beginning of May mm-hmm. in in southern Arizona. So it's about to get really, really hot. For yeah, those June, July, there. August is 100 to 115 degrees every day. <sighs> I every hate day. it so much. With a small intermission of monsoons. Oh, I love monsoon season. You get a little but... break so you, no one goes crazy. And but... then it's like... I would say the whole month of August is usually like a break. That's usually monsoon. And then it goes back to like 100 degrees in September usually. And then October, if you're lucky, it'll June, start July to get a, a little cool. June, July are like. July is the biggest bitch. Honestly, if you can, you just get the fuck out. You just don't live here for those two months of the year. Yes. It's we, pretty brutal. We literally, so we literally have. Um, a group of visitors that comes down during our winters. All oh, the Canadians, the eh? Canadians, we call. Oh, them, we love the Canadians. We call them snowbirds here. They're just winter visitors, and they're they're smart. They come down here for the winters because our winters are so nice compared to theirs. That the, yep. right after Easter, they get the fuck out. They're for the like, summer. nope, <laughs> I don't fucking think so. So what's nice is during <laughs> the summer, if you do live here, the roads are nice and clear. Oh my gosh! Because Canadians I have love this it. thing. Where, um, God bless you guys, we love you. You drive really, really slow. So fucking slow. You are the most careful, slowest drivers in all the land of the world. Um, Thanks for keeping us safe. Thanks for keeping the road safe, Canadians. We appreciate and they just, it. And then on top of that, the, the old people that come to, to visit from the north and like... They, they just con- – the roads are just congested so much. And we already have like a ma- – we're the fastest growing city or county fastest in, growing in the nation. County. And I think our state also is known to drive the fastest of the states. <laughs> yeah, which is We have notoriously so fast drivers here. It's um, I, but to us, we all think we're fucking slow. Mm-hmm. We all want to get moving. There was a there's this <laughs> there's this list that uh, goes around Facebook every now and then. That's like twenty five things you'd only know if you're from Arizona, right? Right. And I remember one of the things I read on there was. If the speed limit says 65, it really means 80. Don't yes. go under there, under 80, because then you're going too slow. It's, it's slow. true. It's true. It's totally true. Every freeway in, in Arizona, you go 80. Mm-hmm. And then if you're exceeding that, like, there's another group of people who go 90 or 100. Yes. And that's, like, the fast drivers oh, yeah. to us. And cause, if cause, you're going 65, you get the fuck over to the right. Yeah, you are going You are going to kill somebody. You're being unsafe, quite frankly. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> it's Really, really unsafe to drive that slow one you know, it's funny <laughs> one one thing i specifically um i took like a driver's ed course when i was in high school and one of the specific things they had said to us that i remember is that it, the rule isn't to go the speed limit the rule is to go with the flow of traffic so, so that's what they teach us we never have a chance they teach you that <laughs> and let's also address one other thing about arizona that's hilarious 
uh, we're one of the only states where when you get a driver's license, mm -hmm. it is literally good. It's either good for 65 years or until you're 65. I one think of it's the two. until you're 65. So literally, no matter what age you are and you get it, uh -huh. it'll expire on your 65th birthday. Yes. So you can go... 40 fucking years without ever having to reprove that you have to that you can drive oh yeah when <laughs> yeah when i lived in los angeles um so at this t point oh we're also another state where when you get an id <laughs> that if you're under the age of uh 18 it's you get an id that's uh vertical or are we one of the only ones who do that yeah Oh. I learned that real quick when I went to California. I didn't know that. Because when you, you get, go We call to, it the up and down and the sideways. The up and down and the sideways. Yeah. Do you have an up and down ID or so, a sideways one? Exactly. <laughs> and so now they recently, as in like four or five years ago, they passed a law saying that they couldn't serve alcohol unless you had a horizontal ID. Regardless, regardless of, of your, your age. age. Yes. Yeah. So now like it's more prominent to see people with horizontal IDs, but a lot of people would just carry around this vertical ID for you know, as long as they could yeah. because they could. Well, when I went, when I lived in Los Angeles and I moved there when I was 20 and I was a smoker there also, there were so many times I was turned away from buying cigarettes. Really? Because they'd look at my ID. They'd see it was vertical. They'd see the expiration day was 2055. And, and they'd be like, yeah, get the fuck out exactly. of here. And they do this thing You're where like, like, no, they give these out in Arizona. Yes. It's real. And it got to this point <laughs> to where I always knew if they were or weren't going to sell it to me because they would take it and they'd look at it and then they'd look at me and then they'd look at it. And usually if it's somebody younger, like a little like smirk comes over their face. Like, oh, I got you, fucker. And I literally just have to sit there, wait a couple seconds, and then I just go are you going to sell me them or not? And they'll like usually just shake their head. No. And I'm like, okay, well let me go to the one down the street then, <laughs> you How know, obnoxious. it's just, yeah, dude, I always ran into that issue and I never knew that was like a thing that people just weren't used to until I moved to California and was like, Oh, this is different. I had no idea that, that, we were one of the only ones who yeah. do that. To the point to where, like, people, if I told people my ID was vertical, they'd be like, <laughs> like no, what? get the fuck out of here. And I'd like, have no, to it pull is. it out and show it. It's them. the up and down, not the sideways. The up and down, yes. Yeah. But, dude. How fuck. funny. Yeah, dude, it was the funniest thing. Arizona's, <laughs> you never realize living we're here. We're the Wild West, dude. Yeah, dude. You never realize how, like, different Arizona yeah. really is. Well, because it's not different to us. And we were yeah, born here. Exactly. It's just normal. But yeah, if you're not from here, people look at us like we're fucking crazy. And we are. Here we are. You have to be a little crazy to live in an oven. The the heat really does fuck with your head, man. <laughs> when you work in retail, there's literally a part of the year mm -hmm. where the bosses will go around and they'll say, okay, guys, summer's coming up. People are going to be cranky. They're yep. going to be a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. And my whole You life, have to prepare for it. There's always those. Yeah. They'll always tell you summer's coming up. Everyone's going to be irritable. That means you too. Uh -huh. And they tell you to just try to be polite. Try that. And yeah, it brings out all the crazy people for sure. Fucking fries you, your brain, man. You will go to get in your car to go home from work. And literally the seatbelt will burn you. To mm -hmm. the point that you get a blister on your hand. Yep. You will get a physical burn from your seatbelt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's intense. We're all those times. If you ever <laughs> see those pictures of people who take trays of cookie dough and put them in their like their dashboard and cook them while oh, yeah. they're at work, no, to literally do it. Yeah, that's that's those anything are, that's alive. A picture will die. here in Arizona. Anything alive will die in your yeah. car after a few hours. Mm -hmm. Um. And you, it's literally, you can cook eggs on the concrete too. Yes. Like that's not a joke. You can actually just crack an egg right on the concrete mm -hmm. in the, at four o'clock in the afternoon and it will cook. And you can wake up at, you know, four in the morning and it'll already be 90 degrees outside. It's great. Yeah. It just never cools off. No. Like the ground just whole, it retains the heat. I remember when I was younger, just, just a final note of how fucking hot it is here. People don't just, understand, dude. They, they hear, don't. Oh, oh, they the don't. desert's hot. You don't understand. You literally would die if you had to live outside. Yes. People shouldn't live here. No. It's only with technology that we can live here. Exactly. <laughs> the, the this only... is not livable. Yeah. Not by any. <laughs> needs there's humans were not meant to live in the desert and yet here we are well, here we are but i remember when i was younger if i would have like a bunch of friends spend the night and my parents had a pool 
we would like go swimming at like two thirty a.m. and the pool would be just super, like like eighty high eighties. Yeah, I remember that it's like a bathtub. Like yeah, you can like literally, a bathtub. Like sometimes you have to wait until the middle of the day, mm-hmm. not because it's too hot outside. But what will happen is if you have a tarp over your pool, Mm -hmm. it will make the pool water so hot that it will burn you. You'll literally get scolded if you go in it. So you have to be careful. Here, we don't test the water to make sure it's cold. Mm -hmm. We test it to make sure it's not boiling hot. (laughs) Because if you jump in, you will fuck yourself up, dude. When I lived uh, (laughs) years ago, I went up to New York for my grandparents' 50th uh, anniversary. And we were hanging with our cousins. And they had an upground, above-ground pool. Yeah. and Those will get hot. Well, here's the thing, though. So this was middle of July in New York, okay? so Oh, in New York. In New York. Oh, okay. Well, you're fine then. So – and so my cousins and everyone who lived there are like, hey, let's go swimming. Middle of July. It's summer. Okay, let's go swimming. Yeah. I jumped in that water. I jumped right back the fuck out. Oh, was it, it freezing? It was so cold. Yeah. You know, and my, and my fucking cousins are sitting there going like, pansy, pansy, pansy. And I'm like, I am from Arizona. Yeah, we If that swim water is below water. 95 degrees, it's too cold to swim. Yeah, we literally <laughs> swim in bath water. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> Oh, God. So, Uh, yeah, Arizona's crazy. Come visit us. Come during the monsoons. Yeah, monsoons are fun here. There is nothing better. They should make a candle out of it, honestly. But Mm -hmm. the smell of the desert after it rains. Yes. There is just – it's got a tinge that you won't find anywhere else on Earth. I love monsoon here. We have this thing. I think it's called creosote that we have here, the creosote bush Mm. in Arizona. And that is, you know, like when we say it smells like rain, uh-huh. Adam, me and you. Is it really that? It's that. So other places, they don't get that. There is no smell of rain. Rain just smells like moisture in the air. It just smells humid. In Arizona, guys, we literally get right before it rains, like as the clouds are building and the moisture builds up in the mm-hmm. air, we get a very, very specific, how do you, like earthy green smell? Earthy. The... I don't know how to explain. It It smells like rain is what we say. Yeah. We say, oh, it smells like rain outside. But it is a different smell than any other place that rains, for sure. Yes. We have a um, a weed, basically, that mm-hmm. grows out here, and that is what does that. Yeah, there's nothing like... Come it's here, amazing. Come here in August. In oh, it's amazing. It's it smells so good. Well, on that note, I think that brings us to time here. You know, I legit had fun on this one. We went all over the place. I was, today. Gonna, I was just gonna say we kind of we really did go all over we the place. We went all over. <laughs> it was fun though. It was Ooh. a good time. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to uh, episode eighty nine of the Hardly Millennial Podcast. Uh, remember, you can follow us on all the social media platforms. We also have a Patreon: www.patreon.com forward slash Hardly Millennial. And any final thoughts, Matthew? If you've seen them both, let us know down below in the comments. Hateful Eight or Django Unchained. Go. Bye-bye. Bye.